For a small payment of $19.99, you can have these hands personally delivered to you immediately. Do you want the debate or do you want these hands? Tell me what you want. Want these hands. I'ma do Welcome to the Catch These Hands Podcast. I'm your host, Dustin Bro. This is also on the new I'm Kind of Famous Podcast Network. We made a whole new network. I decided I wanted to make a network. I got several shows. I've been teasing this for a while now. Now it's coming into fruition. The Catch These Hands Podcast, a combat sports program. We're going to have MMA, kickboxing, interviews, um, boxing. Man, look, this is a whole different podcast. It's something new I'm trying out, and uh, we're going to do I'm not going to commit to uh, it being a weekly show or anything like that. We'll just do them as they come. Um, I got several set up, so I got enough uh, interviews set up ready for this. Uh, but basically, what I'm going to just give you a rundown on the concept. The reason I'm doing this like this right now, uh, this episode, I got Dave Rickles and Cody Carrillo on the show. But we record this before i knew how and what intro i wanted to do so we're just gonna do a transition into that episode once i get done with the intro but i want to explain to y'all what this is about uh catch these hands podcast basically what i'm gonna do i'm gonna always have two guests on and with those two guests we're gonna just talk we're gonna talk uh fight the the world of fighting the world of combat sports but in that the way we're gonna handle it is not just as an interview but they kind of interview each other. It turns into like a round table type of conversation. Hopefully they can drop some jewels. Now, unlike my other shows where I do a whole lot of talking, I ain't going to talk as much um, because, you know, but like this, I don't know as much as they know about this sport, but I know enough to carry a conversation. And that's what we're going to do. So um, this is the I'm Kind of Famous Podcast Network. This is Catch These Hands Podcast. Um, Look, Everything is going to fall under the I'm Kind of Famous podcast umbrella. So that's what you can get used to. And you get used to more of these. If you got any fighters or if you're a fighter and you think you want to be on the podcast, holler at me, kindoffamouspod at gmail.com, K-I-N-D-A famous, P-O-D at gmail.com. Also, all podcasts can be found on kind of famous pod, uh, dot podbean dot com. You also on iTunes, Google Music, Play Store, Stitcher. Anywhere you listen to podcasts, and of course, you can go to facebook.com slash kind of famous pod. And that's where all the show material, show notes, and things like that will be uh, as well. Real easy to come to. Please share. Please find, subscribe. If you're on iTunes, please rate it. Um, sponsors, still looking for sponsorships for the show. It's a new show, so it's kind of hard to get sponsors until they start to see what's happening. So if you want to be involved with the show, you want some product placement, want to get inserted in some ads, things like that. As well, email us kind of famous pod at gmail.com and uh, we can figure out some ways that you can support the show and we can support you. Uh, do something mutual and we'll just go from there. So, without any further ado, we got Dave the Caveman Rickles, Bellator Superstar, and also another fight, uh, Man of the Cage, Cody Carrillo. He was just at EFC 6, he had a controversial win against Josh Pfeiffer. We talk about that, we talk about the aftermath, and we prepare for the future. This is the I'm Kind of Famous Podcast Network. I'm so glad that we got this new show going. Catch these hands, and we'll kick into it right about now. I don't really know how to start the show, so we just started. We just talking into it. I'll come back later and add something to the beginning. So I ain't got no sponsors. I ain't got nobody to shout out. You ain't got so no sponsors right now? Not for this one. Oh, okay. Supplement World, Supplement Giant. What out? Who else I need? Omni, uh, Omni Cut. Shoot, Omni Cut. Don't worry. <laughs> Uh, Whatever on it, y'all want, on it, on it, com. I need some supplements. Fox Fitness. Fox, if y'all, anybody want to jump in here. They got the funniest kickboxing structure. That's what I've heard. The funniest kickboxer. Funniest looking kickboxer in town. <laughs> All right. <laughs> that town being Wichita, Kansas. Now, I don't know which one of y'all. Uh, Cody got the, the, the custom made hat. I just got a custom, custom haircut. All right. So, we'll, here we'll do this. We'll start with Dave. Uh, you got a fight coming up. By the time this comes out, 
you'll be fighting this Friday, Saturday. Uh, yeah. It's coming out next week. Yeah, right, right, right. All right. Long layout. This Friday. Long layout. David Rickles goes to battle with Brennan Ward. Scared? In an unforgettable bell tour match. You scared of him? Hell no. <laughs> What's there to be scared of? I don't know. You afraid of clowns? Basics, rudimentary footwork. <laughs> uh, <laughs> two punches. He's got a two punch arsenal, a right hand, and a left hook. Yep. The most predictable fighter on the roster. Oh, man. That is tough words. Yeah. He, man, you know, he's made his way, though, by. I mean, who's his most notable win? Sada Wad? I beat his ass, too. When, when did he beat Sada Wad? I. And somewhere, I don't know. I just only yeah, he don't even study these fights. Paul Daly knocked him out pretty damn good. It's gonna be a good scrap, though. I honestly think it'll be a good fight. Um, he's coming off of the Fernando Gonzalez fight. He lost, but it was a good scrap. How motivated are you to for this fight <clears throat> since it's been so long? Um, you know, motivation, man. You know, that's funny you say that though because, uh. When we stopped doing shows at the Kansas Star Casino, it, it just made me kind of hungry, man. Like, I'm like, okay, what are y'all sleeping on? Me? Is it me? You got a problem with me? And then, it, you know, this little chip on my shoulder started to build. Like, okay, I'll show you. Uh, you guys are going to be pissed off when I beat the shit out of all these dudes. So, um, yeah, man, I built a little chip on my shoulder with Bellator. Um, but, shoot, at the same token, man, Bellator's giving me everything I have today, which is quite a bit. So, so I'm pretty happy. I mean, I'm just a happy man in general. So tell us about the fight. We I know we know it's a fight. Give us a date, location, this whole thing, weight class. The, the give it the whole spiel. The whole spiel is a uh, yeah. I've moved up to 170 fighting Brennan Ward. Uh, man, he's got like 15 fights in Bellator. I've got 17 fights in Bellator, man. So we just you know we've been around for a minute. We're both veterans. Uh, we're both known to be exciting. Like we both walk forward and throw fists. So. It's going to be a good one. Now, you got a Bellator record at stake, too. What's that record? I got... Man, I'm on... Oh, man. We almost got wrecked into by a bicycle. I should have called this dog fight. Uh, no, there was a... We're on the cut. <laughs> I'm on the cusp of, uh, you know, one more win, and I'm tied for second place with most wins in Bellator history. And this fight will be... Make me number one for most fights in Bellator history. This fight will. This fight, yeah. <laughs> man. That's pretty damn cool, right? <laughs> Most <laughs> fights <laughs> in Bellator history. <laughs> it's and this is cool. like crossover, th uh, cross ownership, and like you know ownership change. Uh, you know, like just oh the, yes, just the entire format. The entire format has changed, and you know Dave's been here through it all. So yeah, yeah. it's it's you a know, camp. You miss. done basically been through different owners and changes of Bellator, and they kept you. Everybody likes you enough to keep you. That's right. It's probably my good looks. Now, Cody, you got a bunch of fights too. Yes, sir. No, I, don't. I, I don't know which Cody one is Cody. But... Cody don't. Well, you got you lost the fight with a bed. <laughs> 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 we got Cody Carrillo and little Cody with a suit. He's staring at me. I think I'm gonna have to. He gonna have he to the catch these down. hands. You hear that? Yeah, that's catch, how I, a plug. That's how I threw my show out there. <laughs> catch these hands. <laughs> but you got a bunch of fights. Like what makes? I mean, you fight a lot. I fight a lot. Yeah. How do you fight so much? Um, I gotta pay. I gotta pay bills, man. And I don't really like. The thing is with me is it's just easy for me. It's easy to match me because I don't say no to anyone. You know, like so anyone who's fighting, anyone who's fight, any who anyone that asks me to fight, I'm gonna fight. And and I have a chance against anyone because I'm I'm well rounded and you know like I'm I'm technical on the feet so like as long as a fight starts every fight starts on the feet I've got a good chance of uh, someone getting knocked out you know or knocking someone out you know so, you know, so one, one thing I'm gonna touch on is like me and Cody are 100 percent like a promoter's dream fighter because a we both fight very exciting stand up style fights and then b we both have never said no to an opponent and uh, this being said you know I I just matched. Cody for this next EFC and he's like I just shot him one yeah, name and he's like on. okay cool. <laughs> he's like let's go yeah in the last when was the last EFC uh, what was the date on that man like what was I, the date on September that? I don't know either way it's a pretty quick turnaround yeah, it's between, Labor Day weekend yeah yeah between so September sometime and then we come back November fourth you're gonna fight again right back to back and you just say yes 
Yeah, it's no problem. Uh, it's actually a, it's, it's no problem. It's actually a little bit longer than I'm used to uh, taking off between fights. <laughs> so that's so why I, I told September, him, October. It's like two months. Yeah, I told Dave like I was like, yeah, I won't even take anything in between. Like doing him a yeah. favor. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, yeah, uh, it's and it's and it's not a big deal because I mean it's just the you know, worst thing that could happen is you get beat up or something, you know. But it's not like and that doesn't happen very often. Like you know, if I take a loss, it's usually from a guy. Laying usually from a guy like you know taking me down, laying in my guard, and, and just uh, holding on and hoping for dear life for that t- that bell to ring and time to be up, so we don't have to get back up on our feet. You know, usually if I'm a laying somebody guard, it's a female. But anyway, <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, so what do y'all? I mean, why why do both of y'all basically keep taking fights outside of the money? Because like you said, you could lose, but in some cases, losing can tax the brand you know makes it where it's hard for you to get the next fight in some cases or at least on you know bellator end they could start to separate separate you from the company and then separate you from your next fight Dang. right so what's the question i mean what are you why? wondering why are y'all keep why? why y'all why do y'all risk losing by fighting so much uh well you know i just had a year off nearly um but i used to you know when i did it they had the tournaments i fought every four weeks or whatever it was and then you know i stayed super active fighting there at the kansas star casino but i just like to fight man like i mean it's just an enjoy i love the process i love the entire process man like where you buckle down mentally it makes you it it just hold accountability is like the best thing i've ever learned from fighting and so it just holds me accountable i have a mission i have a goal i have something to look forward to and, uh, yeah, it pays some bills, too. But, you know, at the end of the day, if you don't love fighting, you, you just, I mean, we, not many people do it for just a paycheck. Right. It's, it's more about the, uh, I mean, like, obviously there's a place you can make more money unless you're, you know, Conor McGregor or something. But I think, like, the, uh, it's more about just testing yourself. Like we talked about before, like, you find out, you learn more about yourself. Like, people, people will never know anything about themselves never know anything about themselves like if you know if you never know you learn more about yourself in one fight than you could like you know in 10 years of your life you know if you don't do something like that so you go through a fight and not not just uh not just like dave said not just the uh fight itself but the preparation and you know like there's days when you're just like this freaking sucks i don't want to go to the gym i mean like the scrubs of the gym are putting hands on you and like you know and it's just like dang you leave there you're tired you look up you're like gosh, and then uh, you go home. You lay down at night. Sometimes you question yourself, and you wake up and you go to the gym the next day, and and that's where you learn about yourself, man. That's where you learn about yourself, and that's what it, and that's what fighting's about, man. Fighting's about, I mean, for me and for, for Dave too. Like you know, we like to, we like to put it put on a show for people, and on top of that, just like you like to you like to fight, man. Like, it's right. not it's not like I I like to fight because I like to hurt people. I like to I'm a bad person. I have malicious intent. Like I like to fight because uh, I train hard and uh, I'm a, I'm like a technical type it's, of guy. It's 100 percent like it's just you versus you, like it's testing yourself, like Cody kind of said. And uh, you know when you can when you can go through those terrible practices where you you know you're questioning <laughs> man like why am I even doing this? Like I'm about to get washed. Like and you have those thoughts. Every fighter, you have a bad day in the gym, man. Like and you, you go a little bit negative in your head or whatever. But it's going home, going to bed, and being able to reset and find that confidence tomorrow. Yeah. You know, and like learning stuff like that in your brain is good for for everywhere in life, really. So speaking of the reset, no. Nah, before we get to the reset, <laughs> now you said you ain't malicious. You, Cody's win in EFC came due to stomps. He stomped a man in the chest. And one, that's pretty malicious. Yeah. That's what gangbangers do. Yeah. Uh, you put, <laughs> uh, let me touch on this. He's also putting on a show out there. And he, uh, Cody was a little bit upset. But at the same time, you're, you're putting, I mean, you, that's when you get into that cage, that's your job is to be a warrior. That's what people want to see. You're going to entertain the hell out of them by, by, by throwing punches, kicks, knees, elbows, and whatever, whatever crazy stuff you can do out there. Right. But, yeah, and the, the thing about that is like, you know, like I, I actually that it looked like it's ultra violent or like, uh, but it was strategic. It's strategic. I asked about it before the fight started. I called my shot. I said, you know, I'm, I'm going to drop him. He's going to turtle up. Can I push kick him? You know, like, yeah, as long as it's not 12 to six. 
No and problem. what does that mean? Uh, 12 to 6 means it starts straight from the ceiling and goes straight towards the ground, which is actually not what happened, but that's neither here nor there. Like, it, it, was, it, was, it was still strategic. It looks violent, I mean, but it's a violent sport. It's a man's sport, you know, like. Right. And like, how is that any more violent than kicking shin bone right. into someone's right. eye socket? Exactly. You know? Yeah, I've, it was, you know, it was, it was strategic. I, you know, I, you know, I, like I said, I, I called my shot. I, you know, I said, this is what's going to happen. This is what I'm going to do. And I actually made sure that it was okay before I did it. And, uh, and it turns out it wasn't. But uh, it's, you know, it, it is what it is. Now, we're going to come back to that. But speaking of reset, now, uh, you say you go back to the gym, do it all. You have those days. Now, both of you have losses on the record. How is it after that first loss to want to reset and Your do this all Your first ever loss? Yeah. Man, that sucks. <laughs> it's Especially first, when you have streaks. You're not going to break that. Well, it's the terrible. truth is, uh, you know, I've never lost two fights in a row, but well, the first time you lose, and I'll say this, the first time you're knocked out is like you, re- you realize you're vulnerable. You're like, I can't, this can happen to me. It's not just something, you know, it becomes a reality, and you have to, that, that becomes a mountain in front of you. Okay, I think you'll see with people like Ronda Rousey and some other some other fighters out there. Some people can't grapple that mountain. Some people can't take that mountain on. And if you can't, if you can't, if you can't find your way back to believing in yourself, then you shouldn't step back in the cage. And you know, you do see that time to time. But uh, you know, I figured out that I can. And um, man, you know, it it it's just something special you got to have to bounce back. Regardless of who you are, uh, martial arts will teach you humility. You know, like some people just learn that humility in front of hundreds of thousands of people, you know, or some people learn that humility. You know, if they're lucky, people just learn it in the gym in front of their teammates, you know, like. But everyone, everyone has their day where they're getting, they're going to get clobbered, they're going to get smoked. And, uh, you know, that's that's the whole thing about the sport itself is like being out there naked, you know, in front of everybody, just you and them, like nothing else. You know, there's, there's no uh, offensive lineman to blame if you get sacked, like. It's just you and them, and, and, that's, and that's part of the beauty of the sport as well, of what, what terrifies people, because which, you got to swallow your ego. Which one yeah. you think is scarier? The one who uh, is afraid to lose, so they, so they watch their fights, or the one that are afraid to come back from a loss? I think it's hard. I mean, I think it'd be harder, the people that's harder. Or which for, one is more intimidating? It's harder for people to come back from a loss. You know, yeah, yeah, for sure. Definitely. If, if, but it's, the, it's the people that have both put together, the ones that are afraid to lose, and then they lose. Yeah. They, then that, when they have, a, when you have a combination of both aspects, that's when that's when it's uh, gets hard for people to handle. I mean, everyone's afraid to lose. You don't want to lose, but like some people, like um, just lay it on the line all the time, you know. So that's that's not really a huge problem. But I think like you know, after that first loss for someone who has a lot of yes men or a lot of people around them that, that aren't saying, hey, this could happen to you, you know? Like, right. <laughs> like yeah. The greatest thing I figured out was like, uh, you know, man, that was, dude, I was so scared to lose a lot of times that I was forgetting that I was just going in there to fight. You know, I was mm-hmm. more worried about losing than I was focused on winning. Right. And, you know, for me, a lot of times that, you know, it translated bad. And even fights that I would win, I'd go back and I'd be like, Man, I just, dude, I did not feel myself out there, this and that, blah, blah, blah. Like, Bobby Cooper was a really good example. Like, man, I was, you know, I was coming back off, or, off that loss with Chandler, and I was just like, I can't lose this fight. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I, you know, sorry, Bobby Cooper, I think I'm quite a bit better than you. And, you know, I well, ended up winning. Well, the result ended that way, so. You know, I ended up winning, but it, I didn't feel right when I was in there, man. Like, I was just, like, too anxious. I was so anxious. Like, I was too worried about losing. And, uh, you know, you've got to, uh, you have to come to terms, I believe, as a fighter. My advice would be, you know, fighters who are just experiencing losses is like, you have to accept that you could wake up the day after your fight and you lost. And are you going to be able to handle that? And you have to be able to, I, you know, I, I, I'm okay with it now. Like, dude, you can take an L and come back. And people who have a style like Dave's, like, you can't fight, like, subdued or strategic, like, super strategic or, like, you know, that's as part of his style, as part of what made, what made him find success was him being able to hang loose and just fight. I mean, like, you know, some guys like Chel Soden, like really measured, take you down. OK, I'm going to hold you in half guard. I'm going to pass. OK, like, you know, some and that, and that works well for some guys, but that doesn't work well for David for to fight like that, you know, because that's not what that's not what makes him him. And if he's fought like that, then 
he'd probably start it winning decisions all the time and right. stuff. And then we don't want to see that. Like, yeah, we, and I had to, one of the things I had to do was look back at like what made me caveman. Like how did yeah. caveman get to where he was at? And it was honestly just walking in there and fighting, man. Like, you know, You're talking about going whatever, into the Bobby Cooper outcome, fight? No, no. I'm just or talking just about general. like in general, man, looking back like uh, on my career, you know, and I, you know, I just finally was like, man, what, what made caveman caveman? And it was just like, dude, I was always just happy to be there. Yeah, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, hey, I'm just here. It's going to be hella man. dope. I'm yeah. fighting on TV. Yeah. This is cool. Let's go fight. This guy like, wants to fight me. He's going right. to fight me. And that's what he has right now. Like, Brendan Ward's going to be like, okay, let's fight. Exactly. He's right there. Yeah, man. He's going like, to be in his grill. This has a lot of, yeah. like, it reminds me of, like, the Carl Amasu fight a lot, you know? And uh, just, you know, the, the big dude uh, who, who, at that time, I was like, man, I thought he was so damn scary. But then when the lights hit you, you all you want to do is kill him, mm-hmm. you know? He probably thought you were pretty scary after you started checking Sorry. him. <laughs> does, does it seem bigger when you have these fights, you know, we'll say redemption fight or, or comeback fight at the Star Casino in at home, in front of your home people, or going to that bigger stage like they did with the Chandler, like you'll have here coming up at Mohican? Uh... Well, I guess it's maybe a bigger stage, but I always felt way more pressure like fighting here at home just because, you know, for me, the biggest pressure was always keeping Bellator here. And, you know, A, that's job security for me. Bellator's here. They ain't going to come to the casino without me. And then also, man, guys like Chris Harris, Cody Carrillo, Marcio Navarro, the whole squad gets to fight for Bellator, man. And, And that's their chance to come up. So... Um, if I could ever bring Bellator back, I mean, I wouldn't hesitate to do that, you know? Now, between, I ask this, we'll do some, we'll do some funny business here. Actually, no, we'll go over to the EFC fight, the Cody Carrillo against Josh Pfeiffer, which was a rematch. Uh, first, Dave, how would you able to set that up? What, what made that happen? Uh... I actually can't remember. I think Josh asked for it. Think- you, you're, yeah, you're looking for me for a fight. Yeah, I can't remember exactly how it developed. Oh yeah, oh I, I, I was just watching. I had, uh, I was just rewatching the fight between you two, and I was like, oh man, that would be such a great fight to do again. And you know, honestly, it, it turned out a great fight again, man. Like that was a really exciting fight. The fans really loved it. Cody came out with the big win this time, and uh, yeah. But consider, it se- did it seem like a fight that wouldn't happen for EFC, considering it happened for, we'll say, a larger stage with VFC, with two yeah. pretty big fighters? I mean, right. we're not talking about Well, some- I think we're just getting there. We're getting there where we can start to make bigger fights, man. And, uh, you know, that's something I'm excited about. You know, I've, I want to be able to put on big, exciting shows, you know? I don't want to bring in... Anderson Silver or nothing like that, but man, I, I want to put I on- won't be upset if you bring up Anderson Silver. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I would but, actually uh, fight him. Yeah, <laughs> like, hell oh. yeah, let's fight <laughs> him up. That'd be, that'd yeah, be it's fine, man. Just, you gotta lay down like Diaz. Yeah. <laughs> like, there would be some Diaz. Yeah, there would know. definitely be I some Diaz. Know. I already know. <laughs> but anyhow, man, like, yeah, it's just, uh, we're, we're making bigger fights because we, we're just growing. We're getting better. Now, you, Cody, you get a chance to redeem the loss that went to decision. And you're doing that at home, this whole thing. So, what were you excited about that fight being able to yeah, come yeah. back around? Yeah, it's cool. yeah, absolutely. 100%. I would like to fight, you know, like everyone who has beat me before again, you know, like, because I, uh, the majority of those fights that I lost, like, I'm not, I'm not getting outclassed. Like, a couple of them, I, I, took, a, I took a thumping, but. You know that was that was few and far between. You know, like you know, I would go to go to guys' hometowns and lose a decision, and hurt them. You know, they walk out of there, you know, bloodied up. You know, get get on crutches around the hotel or whatever, and then you know, I just leave because I got wrestled and I have like fence, <laughs> I have like fence marks on my back, like you know. So it's like, uh, it, yeah, it's it's great. It was cool for me to fight him again. Um, the you know, it, it's it's just an instant replay. You know, round and a half. Of wrestling and then uh, stop a couple shots and then start punching him again. So it's it's it's. I mean, yeah, it was it was good. It's good for me. It was not like something. It's not something I would hesitate to. You know, I would I would fight anyone again. You know, like so. But that fight was that fight was for one of the EFC championship belts. Yeah. Now the 
first time y'all fought, you lost that on cards. Yeah. Dave, what did you think about that fight? What the first fight? The fight between Pfeiffer and Cody. Uh, when I watched it, I thought I thought it could have gone either way. To be honest, I just it was a toss up in my head. It was toss up. Who did you lean with? Um, I, Cody's not even here. No, I, <laughs> well, yeah, I would just I can't even remember to be honest. I'm serious. I really now. Don't. Did you feel? I'm I'm sure you didn't feel like you lost, but did you feel like it was a toss up? It could be a toss up. I, know, I I didn't really think it was close. Like I thought that. I spent a lot of time on my back, but, you know, like, third round was, uh, I, you know, I washed him out. And then uh, second round, second round, I dropped him. So, I mean, generally speaking, when you drop somebody, you usually win the round, like, no matter how long he's laid in my guard. Like, uh, so it's, it's. It I was, will say this, though. You have to take in consideration on what judges score on. Though. Right, exactly. Dude, fighters, we look at it's fights weird, differently, man. man. Like, when you drop somebody. And yeah. it ain't, ain't nothing else happened that whole right. round. You won. Right. Like, you won. But, dude, I, that's what – see, I, I'm i always sitting there watching that's fights, weird. and I'm, like, watching through the – I always, like, uh, well, I see it this way, but I think the judges probably saw it that It's way. weird, yeah. And it's weird because uh, – and, and it's weird because, you know, sometimes judges are scoring takedowns the same as knockdowns. And, I, you know, I come from wrestling background, but let's just be real. Like, takedowns and knockdowns are not the same thing. Not the same thing you know? So you is there is down general, 20 times, like. a problem with judging? In Definitely. MMA? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. I think, I think, yeah. I think, and I think it's a cyclical thing. Like, you know, people, they need to be educated, you know. They need to know, okay, Getting well, better. not I only think... did he take him down, you know, he just lay, laid in between his legs. Like, you can't hurt him like that. But if he took him down, you know, look, put him in trouble. You know, people need to be educated. And I think that we're getting there better because yeah. we have more judges who were martial artists or have done things. like. And I think as, as some of this uh, generation of fighters starts to move on, maybe be judges or something like that, then that, then our sport will that's, improve. That's man. what I think. I think. I think we need to see fighters go to judging, man. And uh, I think, well, I know for a fact what we have a lot now is boxing refs who come over to mm-hmm. – uh, to uh, our, you know, MMA, and they just don't really know what's going on. They they hear a big slam, <laughs> you know, because it gets yeah. loud when you slam people. Yeah. But and that's what you, you even loud. hear you even loud. hear the, you even hear the crowd go crazy when people get slammed, and it ain't do nothing not, to the not, person. Not, like the dude really didn't even. Anything, yeah. Man, I remember getting suplexed over my head by Carl <laughs> Amasu, <laughs> or over his head. Like he literally like threw me up in a full vertical. I was at that twelve o'clock we were talking about earlier. <laughs> <laughs> and landed on my back, and I'm just, and I heard the crowd go crazy. I'm like, I'm perfectly it's fine. fine. What's going on? Yeah. Like this is this is silly. Now, dig. All right. So when something like that happens, when it's like this big sounding moment, do you do, can't do? Does that get in a fighter's head? Even like you know you're not hurt. It's like what you it know. Can. And it can. It does. It does because um, you know the you know the judges could be reactive towards it. So you could you know you could be behind the eight ball. Like, you know, because, I mean, judges, judges are sitting ringside, they, they can hear the crowd, like, and, you know, they, you, something like that happens, the crowd gets a good pop, and they're like, oh, maybe this guy's winning, like, I don't, you know. Dude, so, yeah, nothing so drives you, me so more crazy. So you think you got it, so you think, like, okay, well, now I'm behind, and I got to come back and, and uh Because I often round see, back. like, someone catch a, you know, catch a uppercut or something, and you know it, it don't look like it hurt, but the crowd reacts, but then that person who caught the uppercut, goes into full desperation right. and start throwing flurries right. and, and kind of end up gassing themselves out. Well, kind of working themselves into losing that round because now there's like they're working, feeling like they're behind that eight ball, right. overworked themselves, and now they have nothing left. Yeah. Well, the truth is, even if, okay, let's say you're a fighter with a good chin. If you get a guy that l- lands like a Ryu Hadouken uppercut on you and your head tosses back and you got a great – dude, everybody just saw that still. You right. know what I mean? Like, that does play an effect. Uh, whether or not it, it rocked you or not, I mean, it's just something to take into consideration. That's a very clean power shot that just landed. So, I mean... Uh, and things look a lot different from inside the fight than from outside the fight. So, like, you know, we could be sitting here, and, I, and if you and I are fighting, I know I'm beating you up, and you know you're beating you up. I can see it in your eyes. Right. Like, but the people on the outside might be like, oh, man. Lester's really doing good, man. He keeps he keeps he got, grabbing his right. Yeah, he yeah. caught these hands. Yeah, man. One that's so true too, and I know Cody will vouch for this too. Is like sometimes you'll catch a guy with something, and 
not a lot changes, but something about his demeanor changes, mm-hmm. and you're like, I heard him. Like yes. you just know, like yeah. you can feel it instinctually. Right. Like you're like something happened. He's not reacting. Like everything in your primal brain tells you that I should go kill him now. And, right. You know that's called the you know fighters the, the killer instinct. Killer instinct. Guess, yeah, know? man. And, and not everybody has it, but, but and I sometimes mean, you could tell. You could tell. Uh, you know, you like for me, for me, I like to let the guys know. Like, hey, I know I hurt you. You better start wrestling. Like something. Like you know, I'm letting them know. And that makes it. And do for, y'all talk junk? Yeah, in, I do. In the I mean, Cody does. I, I don't really <laughs> talk, but I mean, I do. But it's and, and mine is strategic. It's not like oh, because I'm uh like egotistic or flamboyant. Like I'm a tiny bit flamboyant, but it's it's <laughs> it's to uh, it's hit him, you know, and be like, hey, like you can't stand, you can't strike with me, you can't strike with me, and then to talk him into striking with me because. Right. At what point is this happening? You got a mouth guard in. Like, yeah. was this? Is this? Yeah. I mean, what? In boxing, I see it all the time because yeah. you can see them. You know, they yeah. get broken up and they say jaw a little bit, yeah. or they get close and they jaw a little bit. But y'all getting punched in the mouth <laughs> with no glove, basically. <laughs> Why? At what point are you saying? It? I'm yeah. gonna go back and look at this fight. Yeah. Did you say something to Josh? Uh, no, nah, no, I didn't. I didn't. I didn't say anything oh. to him. Not, not this time. The time before, I did. The time before, like, were you saying in between rounds or like? You know, like uh, the fight before with Bryce Logan. Like, you, you start tagging a guy up, and you can tell him, they get, you know, the shoulders slump, and their eyes lower. And you're like, yeah, you, I got right. you. Yeah, you yeah. better start wrestling now. Man, you know? My, you know, on the same note, uh, not even, like, when you've got somebody hurt, but you just their demeanor changes. Like, dude, my favorite thing in the entire <laughs> world is in between the first and second or second and third is when I can look over at the guy. <laughs> And he's just slumped over in his yeah, corner. Like, oh, in the he's corner? Huffing and yeah. puffing. And I'm like, You're yeah, tired. That's it. You're man. tired. I'm yeah. about to kill you, dude. <laughs> and it, like, and I just thrive off that. Yeah, like, I love like like when you can see yeah. a guy physically tired. Yeah, you just gave me goosebumps, man. That's the yeah, as as best, dude. man. Like, you like, yeah. Not like me. I don't go in there beating up. You ain't nobody. done it, bro. You ain't <laughs> know about but it. But you know, to know, you're like, Look at him. And, you're, and their stomach is going, Whoa, whoa. Their stomach is heaving. You know, and then you stand up and you get up and and I can't help but I just smile at him. I'm like, <laughs> you know, you're like, oh man, it's rough. Now it's part of this because y'all both kind of come from this same striking forward fighting gym. I think so. It, yeah, there's. I mean, one thing. I mean, there's just no doubt about it. Like Zerger bred fighters. You know, like there's Andy you didn't Zerger. stick around yeah. Andy Zerger. He, he bred fighters. You know, you didn't stick around that gym if you did not like to throw down. Like, if you didn't like to get mean and a little bit gritty, like, you just wouldn't have stayed there. Like, we just, I mean, all we used to do was fucking spar. Yeah, yeah. You know? Yeah, there's, there's some pretty, there's some you, pretty uh, vicious, you, like, war sessions, you know, like, that people, you know, probably walk in on me, that one. Dude, like, like uh, 20 seconds <laughs> after the bell, they're still fighting, you know? Because like, <laughs> yeah. y'all make me tense. I'm like, whenever I watch anybody from that gym, on the big stage, I'm like, why are you eating so many damn punches? Back up. Yeah. But it's like all y'all do it. But at the same time, it seems like I guess everybody in that gym has a chin. Is a chin something you develop or you just I think it, y'all it's just not lucky necessarily to have as, good chins. It's not necessarily as much as like a chin is just not being gun shy. Right. Because guys are, if you know, when you, you get, tense up, you, get you hurt, tense right? up before a shot, you're getting knocked. You out. get hurt, or if you're if you're scared, like, oh, here comes a punch, I'm gonna get hurt. Right. You're gonna get hurt. Like if you're like, oh, here's a punch, I've been punched a lot. Okay, let me let me slide with it, roll off right. it, or I let, or let me think about hurting him back, like you know, fire back at him. It's not, and 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 to be honest, like strike, like striking cardio is, you know, is like you know, guys are guys are panic, they don't know how to strike, they panic, and that's what makes them tired, you know. And that makes them hurt. Makes them hurt, get hurt easier. Cause they, they, you know, they wrestle, 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 and you get stood up, and you see the guy was on top. He's like, oh, oh, and you see his heart beating yeah, faster. He's like, yeah, oh, yeah. and I was like, dang, I worked so hard for that takedown, and now I got to strike again, and I might get hurt, and they get more tired. Like, you know, you you watch the instant replay of that last fight. That's what's happening, man. Like you got like people panic. They oh, get for sure. Yeah. I, you know, I remember vividly seeing that. You <laughs> yeah. know, like there's when a guy gets a takedown. Or, or multiple takedowns, and nothing, he can't do nothing with it, and he has to get up yeah. and go back out of his comfort zone. Like, it, it does. You Like we were talking about, it's like a breaking moment. Like, you yeah. can see that in their eyes a lot of times. That Davi Ramos fight was one where you can, you Pride. basically saw it. I mean, he mm-hmm. didn't want to get back up. Right. Uh, Shit, Aaron Darrow. <laughs> are, these, are those, like, like, when you see that happen, 
for you, at least I've seen that restraint from just going all in where everyone right. in the crowd, including myself, was like, God, go, 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 yeah, go. Like, what makes you, is it, is it a, is it a strategy? Is it like, just not want to get caught or just kind of keeping yourself paced just well, in case he's playing dead You mean or like between rounds? No, when it's when you can clearly see he's done. But the fight hasn't – so like Ramos yeah, – I just have to feel like I'm in a position to finish. Mm. Uh, and what does that take? You know, the last thing you want to do is gas yourself out, you know, trying to finish somebody and, and your gas too. You know, you want to keep that edge. And like the Daryl fight, I – you know, he was super gassed between two and three, and I just putting a whooping on him, right? And I, you know, I just knew I was like, all right, well, here it is. We're gonna stand up. I'm gonna finish him. Like, there's, there's a, for me, there's always up. a point in my right. head where I'm like, now, finish him. Like, I, it's just something that clicks. I don't think about it. I just go until I feel it. Until I feel like this is the right time, and then it just says go. Time to kill him. And, and then, you know, you know that, I've not, like I said, no, Dave. We've been training together for a long time, and, and both of us learned that lesson. Like, you know, you think you got someone hurt, or you drop them, and then you go after them, and then you get tired, and then the rest of the fight is different. So, like, right. we both, and you learn that from experience. Like, it's not like, so like, okay, well, I've got him hurt. I'll just hurt him again later, and I'll hurt him again after that, and then I'll hurt him again until he stops, until he stops. You know, that's, like, I, I, you know, I've made that mistake plenty of times and dropped a lot of guys and then uh, gave up, you know, two rounds after that, you know. So let's go back to your last Chandler fight. Mm-hmm. So you make it out the first round. Um, he hurt you. That essentially that ended the fight. Let's say that you was able to survive that part I of it. I would have slaughtered him. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So you don't think no, you would really? Yeah. He would have been so gassed, yeah, man. So like tired. that was that honestly. Was I you know the crazy thing is I was laying there and I you know my nose was just broken. Yeah. He he couldn't get me with that guillotine. I was still man. I was all there mentally. And I was just like, he's going to be – all I could think about was how tired he was going to be <laughs> after that. And I, and that was what I was holding on to. That was what I was holding on to. I was like, he's going to be so gassed. We're going to go get him. This is the game plan. This is the game plan. Stick to it. And then, man, you know, as, as fate would have it, I just – I couldn't – The I wasn't hurt, but the – the I think the doctor – or the ref made a good call. He made a good call. He, sma- he smashed my nose again. And then uh, uh, truth was I still had a little bit of rubber legs. I couldn't quite get up. And I, I think we were still about two minutes off, or mi- at least a minute and a half from the bell. If we'd have been a little bit closer to the bell, I would have been good. But, you know, I was going to take some damage for sure. Yeah, you was close to the bell. Close to the I bell. I couldn't remember how close we were, but, uh, Because yeah, it man, wasn't I mean, a rocking shot. It was more of like, to me, what I saw looked like an uh, old crap shot, where it's just like, he got me. Recovery, but he, you know, Chandler is pretty quick on his feet. Right, right, and right. And he's just like smothered. Because a lot of it, I mean, you can still he see. Was he was some good pre- ground and pound. Um, but I could, you can still see you protecting yourself, right. but he was still sneaking That was a thing. You know, when I walked out of there, I was like initially pretty upset. I was like, I could have made it. I could have made it. I was fine. Blah, blah, blah. This and that. And, you know, the truth is, like, dude, when the, when the ref calls it, the ref calls it, man. There's nothing you can fucking do, man. Yeah. Like, that's it. Like, okay. Well, shit. I mean, I was in trouble. I was hurt for sure. You know, could I have made it through? Maybe. I don't know. Said, what do we want to do? Wait until the person's fucking laying there? Right. Just <laughs> I mean, like blood sport. Dead, you know? And it just it takes like, you know, when, uh, you know, a fighter like that is hurt a little bit, you know, like then just the tiniest shots, like, can, you know, really like turn, you know, give it a little more of a flash again, you know, until you're, until you're, you know, you have your wits all about you. And that's, and uh, that's just kind of that's just kind of what happens in a situation like that. But at the same time, like conversely, just like we talked about, if you know that fight, if fighter B who is hurt is, and back. survives, then Congo, fighter A is done. Congo is living a career off of the one comeback. <laughs> fight. Uh, the, Pat, the Pat Barry. <laughs> He's had that the, was insane. Congo's had the most boring fights in the <laughs> world. Since but that was a crazy. One. That, was, that insane. was insane. That was insane. Yeah, Pat Barry. I mean, was he's consistently working. a. Uh, Main event, but that's happened to Pat Barry. That's happened to Pat Barry a number of times. He was whooping, yeah, he was yeah. whooping, whooping Crow Cop. Cop. He was yeah, whooping Crow Cop. Crow Cop, too. Yeah. Man. That was crazy. Yeah, Pat Barry, that was filthy. That was filthy how Congo did him. That was now that was he, the end of uh, your fight against Pfeiffer. Yeah, um, he dropped you. You count that as a drop? Uh, yeah, I did. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. No, he, he, cr- he cracked me, um, cracked me right on the jaw, you know. It was, 
it was weird because it, it was coming. It was a really big, like, wide punch. And I'm like, oh, he's trying to fake. He's trying to throw a fake. That's too wide to be a real punch. Mm. And it was a real punch. I, <laughs> once it hit me in the jaw, it was crap. <laughs> it was like, bam, I'm like, whoa. Okay. And that was like, and I told and I told him, and I, it was no BS. Like, that was like the cleanest shot I've taken in a long time. Like, you know, I've take, I've got hit in the neck and, and dropped, like, you know, hit, like, the back of the head. Right but that, the yeah, that one was right on my, right on my kisser, man. Like, yeah. And, uh, yeah, you go down and, but. Now, it, but later in the fight, uh, at least the way I saw it, he looked gassed. He yeah, looked he like gassed. he was done. Yeah, he was gassed. And, and is that what, I mean, you, you said earlier that you uh, even asked about the stumps. Yeah. So you knew that you wanted to stump. Yeah, I knew he was going to turtle. I knew was, I was going to drop him and he was going to turtle, just like the last fight. The fight before I dropped him, I knew he was going to turtle up. So rather than chase him all around the mat, you know, like uh, I just wanted to use the push kicks. Man, now, and honestly, uh, spoiler alert, uh, I guess they overturned that. Hold on. <laughs> when you saw that, what were you thinking? What the hell's going on? To be honest, like... <laughs> Cause I didn't know Dude, that I'm was like, the thing you could do. In my head, Cody's. I'm like, Cody's about to win, and like, then he starts stomping him. I'm like, oh no, something bad just happened. Like, I'm like, <laughs> this is this ain't good. Cause like, it looked ugly, and then it's like, I didn't even know if you could do that. <laughs> no, I had no idea. None of us did. None of us yeah, knew. Like, yeah, honestly, well, I, that's that's the thing is I had, I had asked before. Why did you ask that? I asked, and they told me yes because I knew that was gonna happen. That's, yeah, no, and, I, you know. I, I don't know. Yeah, because I know you can't with this, the knee to the head of a ground man, opponent. If you can, dude, it's, I don't it's know. an angle. It's a put, it's, and that's the thing is like, yeah, it's like, okay, well, you got to make sure you have an angle. And I was like, well, I'm just gonna push kick him from back here, and push kick him to the body. And uh, the referee Nick Barons was said, yeah, as long as it doesn't, have, as long as it's not straight down, it's not a stomp, you know. So it has to be an angle. An angle, right? I don't think any game bangers done ever stomp nobody. Dude. Right. Because I didn't see right, exactly. plenty of these kind of. Right. I mean, you'd yeah, have to be standing directly, directly on top of them. To, uh, I mean, that was like an American History X stomp. <laughs> that was literally a curb stomp. Yeah. Um, man, if you. Dude, I would love to like, be able to implement those, though. Because thinking about that, though, it's like once you drop a fighter, especially if he turtles up, okay, you can use your feet to keep him there. Or. He's going to slowly make his way right. back up into you, perfectly planted, ready to strike. Right. Exactly. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. he's going to come up into you, ready right. to strike. Exactly. You're there. So, like, I mean. That's rather than being bent over. Right. Like, you all hunched over trying to punch and, him and stuff. And, and uh, you know, it's 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 weird. Uh, the um, the things that. It's head the, kick city. The things that uh, have been, you know, it's been, it's been consulted between, like, John McCarthy and Rob Hines. And John McCarthy, Rob Hines are like, hey, that's. That's good. That's a push kick, you know, like, and uh, some uh, chiropractor says that it's not. So uh, <laughs> on the uh, co on the Kansas commission, I'm not sure. So so you in, well, the way it was left in the arena is you win the uh, was it middle uh, lightweight lightweight championship EFC belt. Right. Uh, was exciting. It was definitely a fight worth watching to see a belt win. It was a good fight all, all the way around, even with the controversial decision. And then it gets turned around. So, Dave, this is your promotion. Uh, man, you know, Cody's still the champion. You know, I, with all of the information that I have, uh, Cody, you can't. How can you? How can you take away a title from a guy who, before the fight, asks if this is okay? The ref says it's okay, so he does it. And then they, they punish him. Like, that seems so stupid to me. Uh, and if we were going to take that fight back, Cody, I'm going to need my money back. Hold up. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, man. Like, see, I just, I'm a fighter myself. Like, and so if somebody did that to me, I would feel super wrong. Like, super dirty. Like, and so, uh, yeah. So man, what like, was the turnaround? What made it the turnaround? Um, it got appealed. Um, the Kansas Athletic Commission, which consists of, like, a couple of doctors and like a chiropractor and uh, the commissioner who has also never done any martial arts in his life. Um, they looked at it and said that that's a no contest because the, the rule says stomp, but uh, they don't know that a stomp is just defined by 12 to six, you know, so. Yeah, it is what it is, man. You know, but still the champ is yeah. and, and new. Here's, here's, here's <laughs> the, 
Ain't nothing really changed. Yeah, <laughs> nothing, it doesn't change anything for you know me. I mean? Like, it's not like, uh, you know, the no contest on my record is not like I, I'm clearly I'm not worried about my record, man. I just want to fight and put on good shows, man. I would, I would, if I could have, uh, if I could fight 20 more fights, put on a great fight like that, and have 20 no contests, I would do it all day because I, I'm here to, I'm here to scrap, man. I mean, I, I mean, like, hey, guess what? Right. You know, I, Hey, if, I, if, I go so beat, what's this? if I go beat 20 guys up and get 20 no contests for beating them up, then I'm hey, going to be out too. I, Check this out, too. If you interviewed every person who walked out of the Kansas Star that night and you said, who won the 155-pound fight, <laughs> they would all go, Cody Carrillo. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Like, nobody watches that fight and they're like, oh, that guy lost. You yeah. know? like. Right. So your next fight, EFC. Title defense against Dewan Pickney. Dewan Pickney. Are you are you looking forward to this fight? What are you? Are oh, you yeah. I am. I love to fight. Why are you looking forward to it? Because there's a good strike, man, and like, dude, that's exactly what we want. You know, we want to see Cody's excellent display of striking. You know, Cody's man, one of those dudes who, like, when he first joined the gym, I was like, you need to wrestle more. <laughs> 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 and then he he becomes like a fuck man. There's like. Such a damn good striker, putting together combos I couldn't even think of, you know. So, so man, it's just been fun to watch, and uh, he's got another striker on his hands this this fight coming up. So, um, it should be good. The guy's kind of a – he's got, like, a boxing background, so he, like, prefers to trade punches, but Cody's a much better kickboxer, so, so it's, it should be good. They're both veterans. They both got big records. They've been around the fight game for a long time. So, tell us more about the EFC card. EFC 7. <laughs> This is the, the, like, big bang at the end of the year, man, like, where um, I said, I'm going to make 30 cents for this whole show, and then I'm just going to make the best card possible. And, uh, yeah, so we put together uh, what was supposed to be three title fights with Steven Wynn. We couldn't find the, the right challenger uh, for that. Um, and so he's going to be kickboxing, but we've got Steven Wynn, Chris Harris, Cody Carrillo, uh, Kelsey Adkins, uh, Tyler Ingram, who performed amazing on this last card That's against an undefeated guy. Uh, Brandon Chevy, of course, another pro favorite debut. here. Pro, pro debut pro, for yeah, both of go. these guys. Or no, it was pro Chevy's for, already got. Pro uh, for uh, Tyler. Yeah, but anyhow, pro debut for Tyler Ingram. But man, it's just like, dude, if I could just pick all of the really exciting fighters in the area and put them on one card, like that's who we got. And I still got more to pick from. That'd be the cool <laughs> thing. If I could put more of them on, I would. Now, uh, this is, I'm going I'm to see if I can call some ruckus here. What, what would you say is the most impressive thing about how Dave fights? What would I say is the most impressive thing about how he fights? Yeah. Man, I, th I, think, it's, um, I think it's pretty much just how he tries to hurt people. Like, I, and it's not just uh, in one position. You know, like, I think the most underrated, I've always said this, the most underrated thing about Dave Rickles' fight game is his ground and pound. Like, because he can hurt you on the ground. He can hurt you. I don't this shit at all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, like, on, my guard. <laughs> in, yeah, on, you, know, on, uh, you know, he can hurt you from anywhere, and he wants to hurt you from anywhere, and, and it's not like, and, it, and it's, it's, just, it's just real fun to watch, and I think I'm, I'm excited for him, man, as, as, my, as my friend and former training partner, like, as a, like to... To see him back at 170, man, because, you know, like, you want to be concentrating on being a martial artist rather than a weight cutter. So, and I think that, I think that with the, with this fight, um, it goes a lot, it goes a lot like we just talked about, like, uh, striking till uh, Brennan Ward gets hit, and then he wants to wrestle, and then he gets tired, and then Dave beats him up. What's so. the same That's question it. about man, Cody? I have the same game plan. That's funny you say that. <laughs> well, there you go. Spoiler alert. Do I got to edit this out? So nah. <laughs> is that much, you that much better than he is? What is impressive about Cody's fight? Style? Uh, man, his relax, his relaxedness, I guess is a word I just made up. Relaxedness. His relaxedness. Right. Like his ability to stay so calm and relaxed while he's in the cage. And then, like I said, like his striking has developed so much, man, uh, over these years. Like he puts together combos, like very smooth. Um, and, it's just fun to watch, man. Like you, you, you can't ever count Cody out. You know mm. what I mean? Like he's always there. Like if he's in front of you, he's he's coming after you, and he's got a fucking six piece 
coming for you, you know, mixed with kicks and knees and everything. Elbows. You got crazy combos. Now, with that said, y'all both were, now ask this next one. He's question. like the Diaz brothers. I've always said it like <laughs> he reminds me of like like he just doesn't you know the Maybe great thing Hispanic. about what we I talked about that. is like you know, he doesn't give a shit. You know? He just wants to he wants to go out there and fight. Like he he wants to go out there and scrap. Like and that's you know, he's just there to do that. Like uh like Cody kind of hit on like he doesn't care what his record like he doesn't care if you can go oh and his record says this and this like he doesn't care about that he cares about that night putting on that using his skills entertaining being a good fighter uh putting together fun combos and and having a good time now I started to ask a really bad question but what you're saying I want to ask something different is Wichita relative this area of Wichita basically a, a big Breeding ground for MMA in Kansas. Um, is it a breeding ground well, for MMA? Well, Ooh. meaning it seems like there's a lot of good fighters. I think in this general area. Uh, between yo, La Silva. man, one 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 thing that really is true is like, I this is one hundred. I mean, without Andy Zerger coming here and teaching like real Muay Thai. Uh, around here to Wichita, like none of this shit would have been possible, man. I mean, you wouldn't have strikers, that's for sure. We'd all be, we'd have to have been grapplers. Yeah, I mean. it's not. Uh, yeah, no, and and most of the grapplers came from, you know, like, uh, it's, it's all. Yeah, it definitely all started with Andy Zerger. Like as far as like um, the fight game itself, you know, and and you know, I w I wouldn't be here. Like you know, uh, you know, these guys. I'm not a Wichita native, but I'm I'm a lifer now, you know. So. Um, I, w I would say that it's, it's a breeding ground just simply because uh, it's a big, you know, it's the biggest city in Kansas. It's, but, uh, you know, like Kansas City has more people. They have, you know, they probably have a little bit more prestigious fighters. But, um, I mean, it seems one, like they do have, like, bigger. There's well, just more camps, people. I mean, yeah. But it right. seems like, you know. Well, he, I think if. Here the, in the little Oklahoma mixed yeah. in, like, it seems like a really good spot. Yeah, it's a good. This is good. It's a good but little But we still area. don't get noticed as much as California. Right. Or Florida or ATT right. top team. You know right. what I mean? There's just certain names and stuff, like, that ha have already. Uh, they're established names, man. Right. Like, and that's where people expect you to come from. TriStar and Black House and all these gyms that have already been formed. Because, you know, unfortunately, what happens a lot of times, too, is. Uh, a guy like Andy Zerger will build. Uh, he's you know here in Wichita, Kansas. He'll build a fighter all the way up to with all these skills, and then that fighter will go. Well, I got to get better and go to this gym, you right. know. And and a lot of times you know they can learn. I'm a big believer in like moving around and learning shit. Like I think that that's that you have to do that. I had to move to Joe Wilkes in Manhattan to learn. Uh, good grappling because he was a coach that I would accept that information from. You know what I mean? Like he was just he instilled a lot of things in me. But but uh you know it just that's one thing that does suck about the game is um I I know that Andy wishes he got more notoriety for what he does. But. It's and those big gyms that are have here like they're very very few and far between are they have like organic fighters. You know like they're all transplants. Right. Mm -hmm. They're all transplants. They all came from right. Joe Schmoes in Montana. Whereas, right? yeah, whereas uh, here in Wichita, like, these people are, like, they're organic, you know, like, it's here, like, you know, people don't exactly move here to train, but, you know, like, if you come here and you're going to train, then you're probably going to show up, you know, and do that. But it, as far as um, a fight, I would, you know, for a fight, the city is fight hungry, man. And I, and I talked to Dave about that before this e this entire EFC thing started. And now you see it, like EFC, like, you know, like EFC puts together, not only do they put together fights and great production and, um, you know, like it's, it's people want to see fights. So, like, it could be like there was another boxing promoter who was putting together some boxing stuff. And there's been a couple of different promoters who put together some fights. And they weren't very good fights, but there was a bunch of people there <laughs> because right. people want to see fights, like, you know, and it's, it's, it's something to do. It's something to do. It's something like, you know, like it, it's something to do and, some, and something that people want to see, you know, like as opposed to just watching on television. Yeah. So what, what do you think it's going to take for uh, Zerga to get that? Notoriety? Yeah, I because I don't. Ever happen. <laughs> yeah. I just don't know if it'll ever happen, man. Uh, here's... I'll, 
man, this is going to be some honest truth. It's like, man, he's just been around in the game so long. He's a little burnt out, man. Like, he just, he's a little burnt out. Like, he gives us amazing training. Like, I still train with Zerger. Dude, he, his shoulders are blown out from holding mitts for people for 20 years or whatever, 30 years. I don't know how long he's been training people. <laughs> but, man, like, he's just been doing this so damn long. I think, you know, in the past, like, he wishes he'd have got a little more notoriety and stuff like that. He wishes that JMTK was a household. When they brought up JMTK, it was on Bellator and UFC and shit like that. But, you know, I mean, it just wasn't in the cards, you know. I mean, some of that probably hit his own fault, but it, it is what it is. We all make our own bed, right? So. Right, right. But Andy, Andy has, like, um, forgotten more about striking than most people would ever know. It's like a 100% right. genuine truth for me. Like, like I can approach him like today, like, you know, like, and be like, hey, look, I've been doing this off of off of this guy's, you know, if he's doing a little bit of a looping cross and I'm moving out here and doing this. And he's like, hey, try this. Oh, try this too. Oh, look at this and try this. And then like, yeah, here's four different yeah, ways to do and it. And then like an hour later, like, he's like, yeah, there's some more stuff. We can do that some other time. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. as a, and it's just he's just got a bunch of stuff going on in there. What would be uh, the biggest advice you'll give an amateur fighter? Fight, dude, fight, fight, and be hungry to fight. Like fight. want to fight. Don't pick your fights, fight. dude. Listen to your coach and go fight. Train hard as shit in the gym. Hey, still have a little fun, dude. I mean, I remember back in the day when, like, quitting drinking for a week was like I was like <laughs> being diligent, you know, like. <laughs> <laughs> dude but i was also 22 i'd wake up with a hangover and still train, train. like we just be training all the time like we just love to train we love to be in the gym and we love to fight man if you don't love being in that cage and you don't love to fight you're not gonna be a good pro and yeah and find i mean besides just fight but find someone who's uh you know find someone who's knowledgeable and has has you like you know you got to find some people like i would find a mentor or someone who's doing it right and follow them, you know, like yes. it's, you know, like yeah. it's uh, not not That's only just huge. a trainer. You don't have to have the best trainer in the world, you know, because there's guys who know a lot of stuff and can't train you for crap because, you know, they just they just don't have it together. So, like, you got to find like a, you know, someone who you can kind of role model in the game and, you know, follow them around a little bit. And some guys around here are doing that. And it, and it's cool. Like, but, you know, as far as like uh, as far as for us, we didn't have a whole lot of people ahead of us. Like around here, like you know, we were more more of the pioneers in Wichita as far as like you know, just for MMA just starting. Like there were some other guys ahead of us, but they weren't exactly the type of people that you want to just be following. Some of them were, you know, some of them left, you know. So it's yeah, you know, if you can find that and you just want to fight, that's that's what yeah, I, would I do. think especially the, the amateur man. That's huge though, like what you said. And then how do we make Wichita mecca? I think it's by by what is going on right now is like. Zerger Bread, Cody Carrillo, uh, Chris Harris, David Rickles, Jessica Middleton, um, Brandon Phillips, if he ever moves back. You know, those kind of fighters, man, we've all got knowledge at least. We've all got knowledge now. Now we can pass those things on to, like, the, the next ste- set of people. You and know we're what talking I mean? about relatively young people as well. Like, right. So now there's a whole lot of fights ahead of them. So now there was, there was one, per se, there was one black belt in striking in the city. And now he passes knowledge on, and there's five. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? And they, that's how things get built up. It's like, you know, saying that you – and not everyone can always coach if they're a good fighter, but but odds are you're going to be better than, you know, Joe Schmo. Who a lot of really people teach know. just by doing. A lot of people can – some people can teach by doing and not and not saying. Like, sometimes you just watch a guy be like, okay, and he's successful, and you're like, oh, I want to be like that. Like, I yeah. see him working hard. You see what he's doing. Like, you know, you see the guy just doing the bag work or working on his footwork on the bag. Like, you see someone like that, and you're like, oh, okay. I guess it's not just me out here just uh, doing what the, everybody else does in the class. So you watch right. it, like, you see that, like, in, like, collegiate wrestling and stuff. You know, the guys, you know, who are successful, they're not just at practice wrestling, doing drillings at practice, and they're staying after practice and doing stuff or, you know, doing things on their own. Doing so it's you know people like that. You Tyler find. Ingram was a good example for this man. Mm. Tyler had like, he was like okay striking when he showed up, man. But then when he was fine with me and Chris Harris every day, like he has gotten a lot better. <laughs> hey, you know get, what I mean? Like, get better or die, right? Right. Yeah. It's just one of those <laughs> things, man. And uh, you know, it's just being influential. That he he was talking about the other day, just watching us, like just watching our movements, asking questions. Another big thing, like dude, don't as an amateur. 
and there's a guy that's better than you, ask questions. Mm. Ask him why he hits you with that shot or this or that or how's he set that up. This, you know. Some uh, guys, will, some guys won't tell you, but some of most of them will. You know, most they should. <laughs> yeah. If you train in the same right, gym, they right, should. Right. We ain't keeping secrets out here. How many pro fights you got, Cody? This will be. Hey. Let me see. This up? will be. Um, Go. I'm doing a Twenty-nine. <laughs> Twenty-nine. How many Dave got? How many pro fights? How many pro fights? What am I? Seventeen and four, plus the other two that don't count, I guess. So mm -hmm. seventeen, four, six, count. twenty. So between two, both you, around forty-ish fights. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah, a little bit. And then you add, you start adding pro kickboxing in there. You know, I'm, I'm approaching like you know, forty, forty pro fights. So. I got so, about 40 with all together, <laughs> yeah. amateurs. Oh, you can't start counting amateurs. amateurs yeah, and kickboxing. yeah. So we're talking between both about 80 100, some fights. 100 so fights, probably. This information yeah. here is valuable information. We're not talking about people who just started, we're talking about pro fighters who, TV fighters essentially, uh, big fighters, uh, great fights in their, in their catalog. Um, I had a fucking question for you. Yeah. Uh, Go ahead. I'm here. I forgot the question. Don't bring it up if you ain't gonna oh, ask it. So what does it take for? <laughs> <laughs> what, mm -hmm. So with EFC and how big it's starting to get with some of these bigger fighters, you don't have to dig too far in the well to go get. We'll just say not as good fighters. What does it take to get on the EFC card for you? For a fighter to get on the EFC card? Yes. Uh well, I'd be. I mean, I'm not gonna sit here and bullshit with you guys, right? You gotta sell tickets. You got to sell some tickets, man. Like, dude, this is still a homegrown thing. Like, I need fighters who are going to sell tickets. I also need fighters who are going to be extremely exciting. So, you know, it's a combination of both. Those go together. Right. A lot of times they do. They do. Most of the time, because what? The, the, the exciting fighters are generally the ones who are outgoing. Right. Kind of. I mean, I just... It's easy to sell. Well, some, in general, there's some exceptions. Yeah, I mean, like, but it's, if you like, if, like, okay... You know, I can I can uh, say that you know that my last fight sold me twenty tickets probably like, right? I, I, like yeah, my, yeah, I mean, yeah. easy on the on the low end, on the low end. My last fight at Kansas Star. Just add that. Yeah. Stack that on yeah, what he did like, sell. And he, right. Cody yeah. sells damn good tickets. And so it's and it's part of yeah. It's I mean I'm a peop, I'm I'm a nice guy, but it's it also just results me. You know, I'm and not, he's handsome. Look at this guy. <laughs> <laughs> well, this video show yeah, face for radio, right? <laughs> <laughs> So they need to be able to sell tickets, be exciting. Then Man, if that's, they're there, that's how it. do they For find me, out? I'm, I'm dead serious. Like, I really just want, I'm still, we're still early enough. Like, I don't want Jay Guard, Musasi, and Anderson Silva and these guys. Like, man, I really just want the hungry young fighters who are going to throw down. And at, at the same time, I also want to give a platform. I want to give a platform to the fighters here in the city who want to still keep going up. Mm. So with that, so let's let's just let's let's kind of iron it out a little bit. So a guy wants to fight <clears throat> on EFC, and he emails you or however he contacts you. What does what needs to be in his package for you to know that he can sell tickets and have exciting fights? Uh, what first, do you need first. Snapchat me a picture of your girlfriend's boobs. Mm. That will definitely get you on the show. Um, and then also, <laughs> hey, if that's what it takes, you know, there's a prerequisite. There's Those a are for Marissa to see, not me. Is, I'm married. The phone now. is dingy right I'm now. I'm married now. Uh, but that's why everyone was quiet. Like I'm not. Oh, oh no, he's in trouble. <laughs> he's in trouble now. His phone is over going. No, nah, I'm. Bing, 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 yeah, bing. no, I'm vulgar. Like I say a lot of silly stuff, but. Uh, you know, the truth is, like, just send me a res. Tell me you want to fight for me. That's the biggest yeah. thing. Say, I do. I want to fight for EFC, right? Like, just be like that. That's all you really got to do is like make an effort. I, you and know, then when he I, says, "Yeah, you want to fight? Do you want to fight John Smith?" Don't say, "Ah, nah, man, I don't think so." If you're an amateur, <laughs> dude, I'm having this problem right now, and I want to slap so many people in the face. <laughs> Dude, I don't think if you're so. an amateur, ah. if you're an amateur and you're turning down more than one name, yeah. if, if you're turning down one name, you're a doofus for yeah. one. Because I'm not, I'm, I'm not out here making mismatches, man. Like I'm trying to put together good fights. Nobody really wants to see dude come yeah, in and just whack somebody. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's not a fun fight to watch anyway. So you know, I'm out here trying to make exciting fights, and uh, man, for that to happen, you know, it has to be good matchmaking, and that's 
my job as EFC. You know, that's my biggest proponent. That's what I bring to the table is uh, knowing what's going to be exciting. And, uh, you know, I think I've done a pretty good job so far. But so they need but to what? they need to tell you that you uh, that they want to fight for Just tell me. All right. So uh, say I want to fight think- for EFC. Do you think the stage... And if you're from Alaska, just send that somewhere else. Like, <laughs> you're too far away. Yes. <laughs> so, do you think the stage that EFC now makes it a little bit more intimidating for amateurs? Most amateurs probably want to go to a gymnasium well, where it's like 12. Right. Years. Yeah, man, which I don't really... I Okay, I just can't think back to that, but like, man, you know, I... It's a two-edged, I, it's a double-edged sword, because some amateurs want that right you know? right like right. oh man look at this like i'm fighting the same place chris harris fighting like yeah look look at this and That's all these lights like it. yeah like oh it's cool but and it, of course it's intimidating but you know those guys are going to be intimidated anywhere, dude if you're you know? going to fist fight somebody do it in the best looking <laughs> right. place possible right. you know what i mean yeah. like dude i could have been oh oh and oh and if if hugh hefner would have been like you want to fight at the playboy mansion in front of two thousand butt naked women I would have said yes. We would have loaded up and went. Man. I'll we be there. All right? Went. Anybody. You want me to fight Kimbo Slice? Okay. Right. Is that one of those things where when you see a fighter or amateur who does that, does that tell you that they're just not cut out for this? Like, do you it, ever break out of that? Man, I hardly break character. Like, I just try to be, I try to be so nice and respectful to everybody, man. And like, dude, it's really hard. It's really hard, man. Sometimes you can you can get through that like people can uh, you can just like all of a sudden be like oh it's cool I can fight like whoever and uh, but it, sometimes it takes a tough fight like I can do that but like yeah. as far as me and Dave like there's a time we loaded up just me and him and went to Burlington Vermont yeah to yeah, fight some yeah. dudes man exactly like with no corner just me and him just, and ourselves just rolled out <laughs> rolled, rolled no out corner, man, nothing. Yeah. Just, flew to Burlington Vermont we fought damn near back to back in a blizzard <laughs> in a blizzard uh, uh yeah so you know. Uh, just not everyone's built that same way, I guess. And when 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 what when should a fighter know that this is not for them? Um, man, that's a good question. What do you think, Cody? What do you think? What do you think is no? It's not for them. I think because a lot will keep fighting, win or lose, but they their heart isn't to be what you if, guys have okay, done. Let me. I'll say this real quick. If you love it, I then just do Keep it because you're doing it. Right. You know what I mean? Like just, just do it as your hobby. You know, not every musician wants to be Fifty Cent. You know what I mean? Like, and yeah, you know, I actually they... have the, the 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 worst problem where people hit me up and they're like, "I want to be a UFC fighter. I want to <laughs> fight for Bellator." And I'm like, "How many fights have you had? None." I'm like, well, "You're starting way too high." Well, where do you like, train? Why don't you just enjoy fighting first? Why don't you? Start an amateur career and see if you like this shit. You know what I mean? Like, because the bar fights ain't quite the same thing. So, uh, yeah, man, I mean, my advice would be just get into it. And, and you'll know you're done when you just don't enjoy training anymore. That's it. The second you stop enjoying training and fighting, the second it's not fun to walk out into that cage, don't do it anymore. Right. Yeah. If you don't want to, if you don't want to, uh, if you want to fight and not go to the gym, then that's probably a good time to like not be fighting if you're not going to be training. Like, that's pretty. That's a good one. Pretty too. easy. That's case. a good one too. Now I'm, we're about to wrap it up. What's some last some words, y'all? If you get? can't remember okay. the name of your kids, <laughs> you need to stop fighting. That's man. good. There we go. <laughs> that's a good medical decision. If you Google, if you have to Google CTE. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Spider Man. Yeah. Spider Man. If you have, if you forgot who Spider, if you see a picture of Spider Man, you can't register that Spider Man. <laughs> you gotta, it's done. All right. Well, since you know you're redneck, if you see Spider Man, <laughs> you can't tell that that's a spider. That's a web quit. slinger. It might be time to quit. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, what's some lasting words you want to give other fighters or anyone looking to get into this game to know? You know how to start whatever you want to say to these people or people who may think about quitting or people on the UFC card may want to go pro or not man I'll tell you this Uh, if we're hitting on EFC one thing is like dude take value in what you guys have here you know Um, this is we really do put together a pretty amazing show right here in the city and like you know one 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 thing that does drives me crazy is just like when those fighters when those amateurs, you know, they just don't feel like 
they just don't seem excited to even be on the card. You know what I mean? It's like, dude, you don't. Re nah. It's because they can't remember. Nah, I don't know, man. They, they can't they don't remember know, what it was before. Right. You know, and like me and him, we've I, shit. I fought in Guyman, Oklahoma. Were you out there in Guyman, Oklahoma? I was not in Guyman. Dude, but Guyman, some crap. Oklahoma, I don't where know what the fuck that is. it was a dirt <laughs> floor. There was literally they just popped up a tent with a dirt floor and they put a ring in there. Yeah, and that's fighting, where we like, fought. VFW sheet metal buildings, it gives me man. An idea. Like, EFC street fight. <laughs> Hey, sign them up. Let's sign get a list going. Where's the street? It's WWE. Where's the thugs at? We'll Bro, against we'll real hold. fighters and see what happens. No hoes <laughs> barred. Hey, you know what? I'm. We take that off the mic. That's business. Yeah. <laughs> well, what about you, Cody? What would you give someone who may be thinking about find going a good gym to the pro? Or okay. I would say find a good gym. Um, you know, you got it's it's called mixed martial arts for a reason. You got to have. Striking, grappling, you know, find a, find a good gym with some knowledgeable people. I mean, I'm, you don't have to be in the gym every single day, like, but, you know, you need to be taking in some martial arts, man. That's what, because, uh, you know, everyone, ev anyone can be in shape, you know, there's CrossFitters everywhere, but it's, it's about, it's about, it's about technique, man. You know, if you, if you can't throw, if you can't defend a jab or throw a jab, then the muscles ain't going to do you any good, man. And I'm right. going to say this, I don't know a whole bunch about it, but... Learn something, people. Yes. I see a lot of fighters training every day, we off hit. in the gym, hitting the bag, hitting this, hitting that. But you can tell. Like, I look at, like, anything. Over time, you should be able to measure something right. that's got better. Right. And I don't think it should go, like, a year or six months where you're marginally better. Right. But you, if you care about something like that, like, your improvement should be, and I'd just, say, in quarters of of strength absolutely man even and there's just too like many man, resources you know. to not be better at something there's just too many right, resources right, there's right. just too many especially these days like you can just youtube and be like hey like and there's some crap there's some crap hey, on the I internet but it changed my all right but you can learn so you can learn like now. techniques or you can watch just like watch you can watch fight. fights watch yeah, fighters right. watch yeah. the you like this dude's style watch his yeah. movements yeah i still that's the crazy stuff thing about me is like you know because i shoot this stuff and I got the way that I'm shooting, I kind of almost have to learn how to be a fighter. Yeah. And so when I'm watching Dave Fighter, you or anybody else, I'm looking at these things to, to understand like how the instinct works. Right. Where sometimes I can see something and go, oh shit, he's about to get kicked, right. he's about to get punched, or he's about to take him down. So I'm ready for that. And it's irritating to me sometimes when I do see these people <laughs> who say they love fighting, who you have you all see social it, media don't, on huh? lock and this and that. And then you watch them, or I watch them, and I'm like, that is trash. <laughs> like, that is a bad technique. And no one is telling them that it's bad. Right. And that that's and that's what you need to not be surrounded by. But, you know, the if time. they end up with a fight, it's very apparent to people who do know how to yeah, fight. Yeah, yeah. So it's out there, right, yeah. It's out there in front of everybody, so. So let's promote that fight. Dave, you got Bellator 180-something. 185. Boom. Tell us about it. We we, oh. we closing out. Give us the whole closing end of out, board. man. I was already mentally closed out. I was <laughs> this is <done>. like <laughs> the, the, uh, uh, the main Brennan Ward. It's gonna be a good scrap, man. He's he's a little the hometown boy, so I'm gonna go out there, knock him out, and then uh, uh, do a little Stone Cold. I'm gonna drink heavily afterwards, <laughs> lots of whiskey. Now, I'm gonna enjoy it, now, man. You know it's the gonna real be, question is the walkout. The walkout's gonna be fire, son. You already. Know. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, he'll man. He'll say anything, but he would not tell you to walk out. Nah, that's, that's exclusive yeah. stuff. Yeah. Like, TMZ, I'm just TMZ looking TMZ at him. Y'all can't see him. even pry, they man. Can't they can't even. TMZ can't even do that. He just looks away. Like, what's about to walk out? Man, you fucking bitch. <laughs> <laughs> I'm it's walking out. That's what's it's a can't miss. It's yeah. a can't miss fight. Him and Brennan Ward's can't miss. It really is, man. I'm, like, dude, yeah, when, yeah. when they when they, they were just like, bumped up to Co-Main. But bumped up, man. This is a dope ass fight, man. The, like, there's just like yeah. a zero percent chance of it it's being not, boring. It's you not know? gonna be boring. So not it's not just something to tune into and watch. And the know? main event <laughs> is uh, Musasi versus Slamenko, <laughs> which, which is, is insane. I think that one's crazy. It's dude. insane. This is like um, people don't even know. Like people this don't is, realize this man. is a, a top notch, world class fight. Yeah, was yeah. this worth the wait for you? Yeah, definitely, man. Like, uh, you know, hindsight, I actually was kind of glad that I wait. You know, waited. Uh, I feel like I've gotten better. Uh, I've, uh, you know, got I've married. had, I got married. I did a lot of shit, but man, like just taking a little time to just relax and just train. Like I was just training, like not worried. I wasn't already had another plate on the, uh, or a fight on the plate. 
you know, so I was just like, man, enjoying training. And, you know, I actually think I went to training more than, than I usually <laughs> would have, honestly. Becoming so, a better martial artist. Yeah, so I was just like, okay, I want to learn some shit. So I just started learning some stuff. So, so we can expect fun. something new? Yeah, probably like lots of jumping karate kicks. Mm, mm. Cody, your fight, EFC yeah, 7, buddy. November 4th. For sure. What you got? Knuckle sandwiches, man. We got nu- lots of knuckle sandwiches. We're serving all you can eat buffet. Uh, Mr. Du- <laughs> this guy, this guy, uh, it's, it's great, man. It's, it's an exciting fight for me because very, very few times in my fighting career have I ever just stood across from the cage and be like, we're going to throw down. Like, this guy's going to try, he's going to try and hit me and try and knock me out, and I'm going to try and knock him out. And that's what's gonna happen. So it, yeah. it's uh. And the last time you did that with the uh, old Villafort, <laughs> yeah, we thought that dude was gonna try to bang with you. Nah, and then he, he decided yeah, to wrestle. He was like, no, I don't want to do that anymore. Oh no, man, so this is uh, this is I'm exciting fight for, for the fans. And I mean, like, it's cool, man. Five round fights are. are uh, I wish I could have every fight be a five round fight. So that's where we're just gonna go ahead and keep this title, so we can just keep <laughs> fighting for five rounds. Yeah, yeah. Which, which is is is. I mean, one thing that you guys are now taking after each other. Dave has these walkouts. Cody had a walkout. Yeah. Spe- hey, a first hey. special walkout for EFC. So we got to keep that going. Yeah, you for sure. You keep that trend somehow. I'm, come oh, up yeah. with something Dude. clever. It's gonna, it's gonna be, <laughs> yeah, it's gonna be, it's gonna be nice walkout. Man, so sure. EFC seven November fourth, Bellator one eighty five. What is it? September Next Friday, October twentieth. October twentieth. I don't so, know why I said September. We're in October, so yeah. <laughs> <laughs> October twentieth. Make, make me wait another year. And like so. I said in the beginning, if y'all want to sponsor the show, I'll, anybody local that want to sponsor the show, you in this fight club stuff, hit me up. Yeah, hit me up. Let's do this on the Catch These Hands podcast. You gonna do anything? You don't like this? You got a problem with this? Just remember, you can catch these hands. Catch, catch these hands. Roll up the street and said you were talking all that mess about my hands. Do you want these hands?